All right. Have I pressed the right button? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, people in YouTube land. Today, we are going to uh, paint coil covers on a 2015 Mustang GT. Premium. My Mustang. They come in this gray color. Some people like it. I don't particularly like it. So, um, you can pop your coil covers off and you can pop your engine cover off. And you can paint in any color like you like. Now, it doesn't have to be a Mustang coil cover. It could be a you know, Dodge Charger or whatever. You have a Honda Civic, whatever. But I decided to take mine off and paint them. I'm going to paint them red with a white stripe and a white lettering. A white stripe and a red right here. Now, anybody can just paint coil covers. You can just paint them one color and be finished with it and you'd be done in three hours and let them sit overnight. But remember, the, the devil, your mama told you, the devil is in the details. And that's where I am making this YouTube video to kind of show you the details of painting the coil cover with the different colors. So, this is your coil cover. You have two of them. This is the engine cover on a 2015 Mustang GT. My colors will be the red again with the white stripe, the red. I'm going to paint this a glossy black. Make sure you cover this up with the masking tape. And of course this will be red and white over here. The, uh, there's a fellow on the internet by the name of uh, 94 GT Laser RC. And he's in uh, forms.corral, C-O-R-R-A-L dot net. If you don't have that, just go to Google and type in painting your coil covers official how-to, okay? And that comes up in Google, and this guy will come up. He has 17 steps, okay? Now, I'm not going to do all 17 steps. I don't think I will. But what I did was I printed this out for us. I'm going to follow as many steps as I can to where I get to the point where I feel like, you know, they're good enough, okay? And the last few, the last step has to do with wet sanding and polishing and wet sanding, and, and I'm not really good at that. So if by the time I've done the first six steps and I'm happy with them, I might just stop right there. So let's get started with the materials that you're going to need. Okay. The uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your coil covers out by the side of the house where your hose is and you want to scrub them down with some Scotch-Brite or whatever you have, heavy-duty scouring pads. And you also want to, I like to use Simple Green. It's a very good product. It cleans very well and it, um, it's biodegradable so it doesn't hurt Mother Earth. And um, the Scotch pads are really good too. Once you got those cleaned and dried, then you want to come back with some 91% or whatever kind of rubbing alcohol you have. Wipe down your coil covers and your engine cover again with, with the uh, alcohol. I got this at Walmart. It's like a dollar, you know, pretty cheap. Let those dry, okay? All right. So, then we're going to start with the priming and the paint and then the, uh, the clear coat. I uh, went to... Uh, AutoZone and I bought this VHT primer. It goes up to 550 degrees. It's, um, it's a primer. It's called VHT. It stands for very high temperature. It's right there, okay? You can get it at Pep Boys or uh, O'Reilly's or everybody. I, think, I don't think Walmart sells it. I'm not sure. But your first coat is going to be your primer, okay? And you're going to want to use like three coats of primer two to three coats of primer. Let them flash about 15, 20 minutes. So your first, your first set of paint is gonna be your primer. It's gonna take about maybe anywhere to about an hour to let it really set up nice, okay? Then, the next day, you will come back and we're gonna start you know, with the red. I got two, two coats of red, two cans of red, because you're gonna do about two to three coats. So this is gonna be your primary color. I don't like what you know running out of something when I'm doing a job so I bought two cans um, if I don't use one you can just bring it back okay then the white is going to do the lettering since there's that not much lettering you don't need that much white paint or whatever you're doing for your lettering the black is going to do the, the the cover okay and the inside of the cover is not again not too uh, much but then this is where you're going to need your glossy clear okay 
And uh, this, this glossy clear, again, is VHT. It's up to 550 degrees. So I don't think we're going to have any problems with it yellowing. You know, if you let everything dry, this process will probably take about a day or two, at least two days. Okay, and it goes up to 550 degrees too. So you can get that. That's the glossy clear. Once I finish this step, I might just stop, you know, because the next steps after that will be the polishing and the wet sanding and, and that's where the guy on the internet that charges like $225, that's where he really earns his money because some of those coil covers are just absolutely beautiful and he does a professional job. Okay, the other product that he says that you're going to need is called Testor Airbrush Thinner. It's, it doesn't have to be Testor, it has to be Airbrush Thinner. You don't want to use turpentine, gasoline, paint thinner, you want to use airbrush thinner, okay? And I got this at um, Hobby Lobby. And the reason you're going to use the airbrush thinner is because you're going to put down a, a coat of the white on the letters, but there's going to be some overspray. And at that point, you're going to use your Q-tips. If you got little Q-tips, or you can get some from your wife, probably she has in the bathroom, but those are, these, these are spun real tight. They, they don't fall apart like those q-tips your wife has in the, in the bathroom. I got these at Hobby Lobby like four bucks okay and this will help get that detailing around the lettering so that uh, you won't have the overspray you know all because that that's where like I said that guy really makes his money and we're gonna try it and the fact that you're watching this video means that I've probably succeeded because I wouldn't put up a video you know me screwing up my coin covers that'd be pretty dumb. So, that's that. Another thing, of course, you're going to need some tape. Uh, this is painter's tape. This is a nice product. This is a 3M edge, edge lock, and it's called 3M Edge Lock. I saw this at Home Depot. The majority of the glue is on the edges and not so much in the middle, so that when you go to peel it off, it, it peels off really nice, okay? And it, and it locks on the edge, and that's where you're going to have your problems with your overspray. Also bought a, a nice knife at Hobby Lobby. You know, you can use any kind of knife you have, but this this is really sharp and it uh, helps you probably get around the uh, the tape that's going to get stuck on the thing. Also, this is a Rossoleum uh, little gun, paint gun. It slips on top of your can. It's going to save your finger because you know I'm old and my fingers don't work like they used to work. But with this. You just spray it and, it, and it allows you to con kind of control the can a lot better than, you know, with just your finger on it. So you have a grip and you can spray a lot easier. I, can, I think you can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. Okay, so the first step, he says, is go ahead and use the Scotch card. Go wipe the entire surface and then clean it. Wipe it with the alcohol. Use your uh, adhesion promoter and put on three coats. So I'm not going to go through all 17 of these steps and read them to you and show them and I'm not going to show you me spraying paint and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read the step, I'm going to show you the product that I'm using, I'm going to go ahead and do it, I'll cut, I'll cut the tape and when I show you the product I'm going to cut the tape, then I'm going to go ahead and do it, then I'm going to show you the results, okay? And in that way this, this uh, particular YouTube video won't be three and a half hours, okay? So with no further ado, I'm going to take my coil covers and my engine cover to the side of the house, clean it, I'm going to spray it, and when I come back, um, we will show you the results of me spraying the coil covers with the first step, which is going to be the primer. Okay? Great. Oops. Okay, we're back, and here's the results. Remember I told you I was going to tell you what I was going to do, then do it, and show you the results. Here are the two coil covers that have been primed with about the primer, about two coats. Took about 30 minutes. This is the engine cover, completely told, uh, painted with the, uh, the, the primer. Remember I told you to uh, make sure that you cover your um, 5.0 so you can see that I have it covered with the blue paint, the blue tape and uh, I did use that little knife because what you can do is you can go over the uh, indentation then take your knife and just, just go right down it like that comes off perfectly, you just pull the tape up. Another technique you want to do is uh, have your, your coil cover on a board and hold it up like this 
when you spray it because if you spray it down in this kind of motion you're going to get pooling and puddling inside those letters and you don't want to do that remember you want to do like three coats and you want to do light because you're trying to paint the plastic you're not trying to you know put pools of paint inside those four lettering and inside those stripes so take your time do do one light coat let it dry for 10 minutes do another light coat and let it dry for like 10 minutes and then you can come back with a medium coat if you have enough paint left the next step will be to go ahead and remember in the first part of the video I said you know we'll let this dry overnight you really don't have to let it dry overnight that was a mistake so go ahead and let it dry for about 30 minutes 45 minutes your next step I'm going to do is the, is the coil cover and remember I said I wanted to do this black so I'm going to take my tape there's the tape over there and there's some newspaper and I'm going to tape get my little pointer I'm going to tape this with the tape underneath there like that and then put the paper all around here like that and then I'm going to spray this com completely red and completely red and ev even the stripe that I'm going to do white okay I'll tell you why and then over here the coil covers are going to be real easy you just spray them all red even the powered by Ford and even the stripes okay you spray them all red give them like three coats of red let it sit then you want to come back on the lettering you want to go ahead and use your glossy enamel okay go ahead and take your, your glossy enamel spray paint spray this area right here where the stripe is with the, the glossy enamel spray your stripes over here and the powered by Ford with the glossy enamel and let now then you let all of that sit overnight because the next step will be to put the tape down and do the lettering which we will do tomorrow morning so that's where we are right now um, make sure you have like an egg timer or something like that so when we come back I'm going to show you what it looks like sprayed red with the uh, paper on a, the thing and, and then that'll be it for today and we will um, pick it up tomorrow morning okay over and out okay guys ladies uh, we have completed the painting for today and the last step I did was to take the clear coat and just spray the letters powered by Ford and the two stripes on each one of the uh, coil covers and then on your engine cover you can see the only part that I clear coated was just the stripe that goes on, a, on each side of the engine cover. Now I left that um, paper on there and I wanted to show you all that I taped the inside. That's going to be black. And my next video here, I'm going to take this paper off and let's see how much overspray I got or how well of a tape job did I do. But we're going to let this sit overnight, let it dry completely. And tomorrow is really going to be the detailing where we tape up everything except the lettering and the stripes and we're going to paint them white. Paint the powered by Ford white, the stripes white, and hope that it comes out pretty good. Then after that we'll make the decision about whether or not we're going to wet sand them and buff them. But let me go ahead and take this paper off. I'll be right back. All right, fellas, I removed the paper, and you can learn from my mistake. As you can see, I have some overspray in this area right where the tape was, and the tape held up really well. So that, um, that 3M tape, uh, something happened back there. You can see that there was some overspray, and for some unknown reason, there's overspray all in the middle. I'm assuming that that paper that I had couldn't, it, it probably infiltrated through the paper, soaked through there some kind of way. But it's not terrible. I think the black, uh, the three coats of black, when we do that tomorrow, should be able to overtake this overspray. Remember to keep your uh, 5.0 badge still covered because you want to leave that alone. The tomorrow, we're going to let this all dry overnight tonight. Remember you uh, spray your, your line right there where you're going to color it white. Tomorrow's spray painting of this black part shouldn't be that hard because you'll be able to get the tape in between that crack 
And when we get that, that tape in between the crack, then tomorrow for sure, you can bet Grandpa Bill will make sure that he puts down some really thick paper over the red so that it doesn't turn black. So we learned a lesson today is to make sure that you put down thick enough paper to uh, compensate for the amount of uh, spray painting that you do. So tomorrow, we're going to let this dry, like I said. We're going to go ahead and tape in between there and put down some thick paper over the red and on this side also. And for the uh, coil covers, again, we're going to put some thick paper around the sides right here, cover up the, uh, the middle part there with tape, as much tape as we can. Now, I don't think we have to be really uh, super critical. I think because we have the, uh, the, the uh, clear coat on there, that that clear coat is going to act as a pretty good buffer so that we can, if we do have any overspray, we'll be able to wipe it off with that test door um, airbrush thinner that I told you to get. So that's the plan. We've done a lot today. The time now is 5.30. I think I started around 12 o'clock, but of course, you know, we waited for all this stuff to dry. I was watching LSU game, watching the Texas game, and uh, that's it. So. We're going to let it sit, and tomorrow morning's another day. Let's see how it happens. But so far, we seem like we're um, doing pretty well here. Okay, Grandpa Bill signing out for today. All right. Okay, fellas, uh, it's Grandpa Bill here. We uh, finished up the um, engine cover. And I, I tackled the engine cover first because I thought it would be the easiest, and it was. The uh, valve covers I'll do today the uh, coil covers. But um, the way to do this was you had seen it already painted with the, uh, uh, what is that, the engine, the engine uh, primer, the gray primer. And um, I started taping up everything. You do want to tape these white lines. You put your blue tape right there and another blue piece place of tape right there on each side of the white line. Then like put some paper over here and paper over here. But then to cover this up, what I did was I just took a, a towel, just a regular towel that your wife probably has hanging around the house and one, just put it back over the, the whole engine cover like that and then put a piece of tape right along here. Okay? Let me make sure you can see this. You want to take a piece of tape, so you have one piece of tape there already, then you take another piece of tape there like that, and your whole engine cover is covered, okay? So you don't have to worry about putting paper all over or anything like that. And then on the bottom side, you use, you know, a separate tile, you use another tile on the bottom. So you put a piece of tape down here, and you put another tile down here, if I can hold all of this together. You know what I'm saying, that, that it would be down there like that, okay? Now, and then you spray it white, give it uh, three coats of white, let it set up. Then you come back and you peel that tape off. You peel those tapes off right there. And if you have any overspray, that's when you use your bottle of, uh, of uh, man, I'm getting old. Sucks getting old. This here, this airbrush thinner. And you put it on a little piece of rag and get it right off, okay? Now, the next part, I wanted to do the interior black. So I already have these red and I have these white. So, as you can see, I use this one right here. And I, I took a, a small screwdriver and I stuck it underneath there. Just all underneath there like that. You see how it slides underneath there? It will slide underneath there all the way in. You take a small screwdriver, slide it underneath there. It covers all of, the, of this part of the engine cover. Then you take another tile and you put it over there. Okay, remember to keep your uh, 5.0 covered up, keep the 5.0 covered up with your tape. Then you spray it three times, okay, and let it flash about 10, 15 minutes in between each time. So it's probably going to take you about 45 minutes. Then you finished. This piece is finished. It's ready to go on. You peel this off, take that little knife, clean it off. And then make sure you clean off any overspray. You're not going to have any overspray because that tile is going to be in there all the way. Really comes out easy, really comes out nice. So our next project for today, whoa, is going to be tackling the, uh, the 
coil covers, okay? This is really going to be, I left this for last because I think it's going to be the worst. So what I'm going to do is put a piece of tape here, put a piece of tape here, one right there, one right there. Maybe, maybe put a big piece of tape across here like that. And then put my towel over here and put my towel over here. Now watch out when you're uh, doing this part of the coil cover up here because you can see that the line goes here. If you just put a piece of tape across here, you're going to get paint all in that hole right there. You're going to get white paint in that hole where your uh, PCV valve goes in. So you want to cover all of this up with tape really, really well, okay? And then, I don't know how I'm going to do the power by four. I am going to paint them white, but I don't, want, I don't know if I want to meticulously go in there and take a piece of tape and stick it in each one of these little letters, or whether or not I'll just put tape on both sides of it, spray it white, and then the technique that the man says in the paper on the internet is to, to do three letters at a time. So what I'll do is I'll cover this up with the towel, cover this up with the towel, have the tape running across there, and then we'll do three letters at a time, peel them off real fast, and wipe down any overspray. Then cover that up, do three more letters, peel it off, wipe off the overspray, then cover up all of that with the towel, and just progressively work our way down. And hopefully, you know, we will be successful. But I'm going to go ahead and tape this up right now, and then I'm going to come back to you and show it. Okay, thanks. Okay guys, I got the, uh, got the uh, coil covers all taped up. I wanted to kind of show you how it looks. So there's the towel. You see, you can see you have the towel over here. I got a little piece right there. I want to do two at one time. And make sure you've got this covered up real well right there inside that hole so you don't get any white paint in there. And, um, and then I've got a towel over here. And then I ran out of towels, so I just cut up a Walmart bag. We have uh, paper Walmart bags here in Texas because in Austin, they don't allow those plastic ones. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the paint real fast and uh, give it its first coating just to kind of show you how that works real fast. Okay, here we go. piece of tape on the top, spray it, and, and I didn't do the three letters at a time. I think if you would have been more patient and you can do that, I would recommend that. But I just had them all, I sprayed them twice real fast, one on this side, one on that side, and I immediately took the tape right up. Had my, uh, my paint thinner, 
and a, and a rag, you know, just a little old rag like this. You can see this. Had the paint in a rag, and, and I wiped on top of it real fast, you know, wipe back and forth, and it was smearing. So you had to keep on turning your rag and loading it up with the paint thinner. And you kept on rubbing it and rubbing it and rubbing it. Not too much paint thinner because you don't want to get it into the cracks, you don't want to get it into the letters. But you just want to rub back and forth, back and forth over the top. That's why you want to do it while the paint is still wet. If you allow the paint to dry, then you're going to have more problems. So you spray it once, spray it twice, rip up the uh, pet tape, get your wet uh, towel with some paint thinner on it and keep turning the towel, keep turning it and turning it and just wipe, 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 turn it, wipe, 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 turn it, wipe, 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 and that's what you get. Okay, fellas? That's it. So the next step, according to this uh, guy on the internet, he says, okay, now you finish painting, which we are, okay, now you're ready for the clear coat. He says to lightly scuff the surface with a fine scotch pad. Hmm, I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, wipe it down with your tack cloth. Remember the tack cloth we bought? This little tack cloth, you want to wipe it down. Or he says you can press there, you know, just, you just really want to clean this thing off. And then you want to spray it with the clear coat. You know, one or two coats of this uh, VHT, right there, there it is, VHT High Enamel Engine Clear Coat, okay? It's called Glossy Clear. Spray it with that, um, two or three layers, one, two, one, two light coats and one, and uh, wait for 10 minutes in between each flash and time, and just let it sit overnight. And then once we do that, tomorrow morning, I will come to you and I will show you what it looks like with the clear coat on. Okay? And then after that, that's when we start getting into this wet sanding. And I don't know, you know, uh, I'm not really good at that. I might just go ahead and try to buff it with some uh, buffing compound. We've got it uh, over here somewhere. I threw it away. Oh, here it is. Right here, we have this pop green polishing compound. Remember that? I got that at... Uh, uh, Harbor Freight. So that's it for today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, clear coat and, and uh, tomorrow morning when it dries I'll show it to you then. Okay, thanks. Okay, good morning uh, you two people. Today's the last day. I'm finished with this project. I'm tired of looking at it. I'm, I haven't driven my Mustang in three days. I'm having Mustang withdrawals. So this is the final product. I, um, I, all I, I was trying to do some wet sanding. I did some wet sanding over here. I, didn't, I, I wasn't getting the bang for the buck that I expected. And I thought that I would probably increase my po uh, possibilities of screwing up something. So all I did was... Um, they, they have, you know, all the steps, all the steps here that the guy says uh, using like a thousand grit, then 1500 grit, and then 2000 grit for the wet sanding, and do the buffing, and he uses a porta cable, 7427. I don't have all of that stuff. All I have is my little old drill right here, and I had put this thing on it. I put the green compound on it. You know, it just, it just wasn't giving me the results. I didn't have any place to hold it, so I was holding it down with this. You know, things weren't working. So anyhow, all I did was got out my old twist, trusty McGuire's compound. This stuff is ultimate compound. It really is nice. Really works good on your car. I put a, a layer of that on, and you know, this is the result. It came out like this, and it came out like this. Okay. So let's walk over to the Mustang and snap them on and see what we got. Okay. I think that's about it. All right, fellas, here it is. I'm walking with my tripod. That's why it's a little jerky. But the uh, came out pretty nice. I'm very, uh, let me get my shadow out the way. Whoops. I'm very uh, happy with it. Looks pretty nice. I um, think it was worth the effort. It took a little bit longer than I wanted it to do. But I uh, got it all back together. Shoot, I keep kicking my legs. I'm sorry. I did put in my uh, new uh, JLT oil separator right there. You can see it right there. 
that uh, a lot of people don't believe in, but I believe. I mean, they only maybe collect 80% of the oil, but that's 80% less oil that's getting on your spark plugs and 80% uh, going down into your engine. So why not get it when you can and clean it up? Okay, fellas, this is going to be the last of this uh, part. You're going to see me. It's finished. I did wanted to show you my next video will be on uh, putting in this Granitale beautiful expansion tank. That will be my next one. This, this is absolutely a beautiful piece of work. You can go to GranitaleMotorsports.com. You can even talk to the owner. I mean, sometimes he picks up the phone, a guy by the name of J.R. Granitale. He's the nephew of uh, Andy Granitale, which was quite a character back in the 60s and 70s. He and Mario Andretti won the uh, Indy 500 with a backup car. But this is beautiful work, and it also has a, an expansion tank in the back. So that if, if, you, if your pop-off valve on your radiator cap was to blow, the uh, water, the um, fluid would just go back into this tank, and you have a little valve here to take it off. So I just wanted to show you this is going to be my next video. I also have uh, two other videos. I have three other videos on, on YouTube. One shows you how to take off the... Uh, sound tube on a 2015 Mustang. A lot of people have been watching that. And the other one shows you how to put in these Steeda hood lifts. I have Steeda hood lifts. I don't use the bar. kind of aggravates me. So I have a YouTube video on that. You can catch that too. I might just make a channel and put all of them on one channel. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really enjoyed making it for you guys. I know it's kind of long. But um, this is your car, so all the work you're doing is your responsibility. I'm not, you know, it's just an informational video. I'm not responsible if anything catches on fire, or blows up, or anything. And this is Grandpa Bill in Austin, Texas, saying uh, take care of everybody, take care of your loved ones, be nice to one another, and uh, take care. Be careful. Bye.